I come from under the hill, and under hills and over the hills my paths led. And through the air, I'm he that walks unseen. So I can well believe, said Smaug. But that is hardly your usual name. I am the clue finder, the web cutter, the stinging fly. I was chosen for the lucky number. Lovely titles, sneered the dragon. But lucky numbers don't always come off. I am he that buries his friends alive and drowns them and draws them alive again from the water. I came from the end of a bag, but no bag went over me. These don't sound so credible, scoffed Smaug. I am the friend of bears and the guest of eagles. I am ring winner and luck wearer. And I am barrel rider, went on Bilbo, beginning to be pleased with his riddling. Hey guys, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle Earth. Today's video is dedicated to the immortal memory of Ian Holm and Orson Bean, as both of whom played Bilbo and have passed away this year. Rest in peace, my friends. The Tolkien community misses you both. Furthermore, today's video is created in collaboration with many other Middle Earth channels for Hobbit Day 2020. I'll link a playlist with all of our special Middle Earth videos made in honor of Bilbo and Frodo's birthday in the description below. I'll also go ahead and link some related articles and videos that helped create today's video, all about the story of Bilbo Baggins, as together we celebrate the life of this renowned hobbit. My friends, relax and grab some hobbit commodities, and thank you all for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Bilbo Baggins, the son of Bongo Baggins and Belladonna Took, was born in the Shire on September 22nd in 2890 of the Third Age. He was the grandson of the old Took, and thus had the more adventurous and Tookish blood within him, but so too was he a Baggins, a notable and respectable family in the Shire, especially after his father built Bag End in Hobbiton. He, like the other members of his family, was a respectable and dependable Hobbit, that was before his adventure, of course. While he was young, he went to parties, likely those of Midsummer's Eve, that the old Took threw and he loved the stories that the wizard Gandalf the Grey told, always about fantasies with dragons, goblins, and princesses. And Bilbo, like his grandfather, loved Gandalf's fireworks. And indeed, that must have been the Tukish side of him that loved all those things, for even within himself was an unexplored and unknown side of him that wanted to go out beyond the Shire to have an adventure. Well, unknown to him, but not to a certain wizard, of course. So when his parents passed away, and he inherited Bag End, he remained as he always had been. But as he got older, he became more restless, even going off at times to talk with different folk, such as dwarves, and he even went off during the Elvish New Year. So he was the perfect candidate for an adventure, even if he was still stuck in his ways. So came April 25th, 2941 of the Third Age, when he bid a wizard good morning, and Gandalf took to, as he would call it, nudging Bilbo out the door, awakening that adventurous and tookish part of himself that Bilbo did not truly understand was there. Now that is when the quest of Erebor began, of which much may be learned in many of Tolkien's writings, but especially in The Hobbit. Since Bilbo is the protagonist of that story, I shan't speak of all his deeds within that tale, but I shall summarize many of them, especially the ones that tell of his character. While Bilbo of course would be hesitant to join the company of Thorn Oakenshield on their quest to reclaim the Lonely Mountain, he would not be pleased that the dwarves ate all of his food, and eventually he would decide to go, even if there was a lot of complaining that came with him. Bilbo's first trial would be on the journey through Eriador, in the Trollshaws, when there would be three trolls near a bonfire. Bilbo would scout them, and since he was assessed to be a burglar by his company, he attempted to steal a troll's money purse, but was caught resulting in Gandalf having to save the company. Shortly afterwards, from the nearby troll cave, Bilbo would discover a small elvish blade that kept the company of Glamdring and its mate Orcrist, swords of the High Elven Kingdom of Gondolin. He kept this with him during his journey, and he would soon come on to Rivendell, an elven land that he surely fell in love with, for he would eventually go on to live there. After Rivendell, the company would go on to get captured by the goblins of the Misty Mountains, and while trying to escape, Dory dropped Bilbo. And so Bilbo found himself in a dark cave with a strange creature named Gollum. Before he found Gollum, though, he picked up an odd golden ring on the floor of the cave, and thus entered into the accounts of the Great, for that was the ruling ring, the One, that would help Bilbo during his adventures, but would prove to be Middle-earth's great strife in the late Third Age. Anyway, Bilbo and Gollum had a game of riddles, 
for Bilbo wanted to know the way out, and Gollum wanted to eat him. Well, Bilbo would win, but only by asking a question to himself that Gollum presumed to be a riddle. What have I got in my pocket? Gollum would find out that Bilbo had taken his precious and would inadvertently show the hobbit the way out while trying to find him. For Bilbo put on the ring and became invisible. But Gollum would remember two things from his conversation with Bilbo, the name Baggins and the land of the Shire, both of which would eventually lead the Dark Lord's servants to Bilbo's homeland. Bilbo would escape the tunnel, coming back to his friends and then to some more hardship, before being saved by the eagles, making it to Bayorn's Hall, and then going on into Mirkwood. Gandalf had to leave the company at the edge of the forest, and Bilbo was sad to be without him. The dwarves would attempt to make it through the forest but would come to danger, and the heroism and courage of the hobbit took form. Bilbo would slay spiders that had taken many of his dwarven companions, coming to name his blade Sting, and with the aid of the ring he would save the dwarves, only for them to be taken where Thorin had been taken to the elven king Thranduil's halls. Once more using the ring and his wit, Bilbo would help his friends escape by riding barrels out of the elven king's hall down towards Long Lake. Thus the company would arrive in Lake Town on Bilbo's 51st birthday, even though the hobbit had a cold, and they would make friends with the men of Lake Town before going on to the lonely mountain of Erebor. Bilbo would be the one to take days to understand the riddle concerning the last light of Durin's day, and it was thanks to him that the door was finally opened, as he understood the riddle at last. Bilbo would be the first to see Smaug, and he stole a jeweled cup, once more attempting to prove his prowess as a burglar, even though such an act awoke the dragon. Eventually he and the dragon would talk, and Smaug would not know his hobbitish scent, and he would be impressed by the wit and the many titles of he who called himself Barrel Rider. Bilbo, during this conversation, would get Smaug to reveal his underside, thus noticing a gap and weakness in the dragon's stomach. Of this weakness, Bilbo would tell the dwarves, and a thrush nearby overheard. It would be Bilbo also who recommended that the dwarves go into the mountain, for he had a bad feeling. And sure enough, after they went into the mountain, Smaug attacked and destroyed the very mountainside upon which they were standing. Smaug went to burn Lake Town, and the thrush would also go to the aid of the town. Bard used the knowledge gathered by Bilbo to slay the dragon. But this was not the end of the story, for the Arkenstone, the heart of Mount Erebor, had yet to be found by the dwarves, and it would be Bilbo who found it first. Knowing of its importance, he did not give it up to Thorin or the others. And for his services and friendship, Thorin gave Bilbo a shirt of mithril rings that no blade could pierce. The thrush from before would summon a raven, Roach, whose ancestors had friendship with the dwarves, and he told the company about Bard and Thranduil's assemblage of armies coming closer to the mountain. Of course, Thorn guarded his mountain against this, and after seeing Thorn's denial to help the people of Lake Town or to have peace with the elves, Bilbo did what I consider to be one of the greatest deeds ever performed, not only by Bilbo, but in the history of Middle-earth. Bilbo would come to Bard and Thranduil with the Arkenstone to prevent war and have peace among those who should be friends. He stood it against his claim to any treasure from the adventure, and in this way he was truly a burglar, where it counted. Even if it was against his own friends, it was to save them. Thus the Arkenstone was used as a bartering chip for Bard and his allies, and Thorn was wrathful towards Bilbo. But this was right before the Battle of Five Armies broke out, and Gandalf's warning of what was to come would unite men, elves, and dwarves. Bilbo would not greatly participate in this battle, getting hit with a stone and knocked out while wearing the One Ring, but he would remark that the eagles were coming. When he awoke and found his friends, Thorin was gravely wounded, and before passing from this world, the king of Durin's folk would apologize and pass in friendship, calling Bilbo a child of the kindly West, which indeed he was. And so Bilbo's adventure was nearly over, and he refused to take more than two small chests of gold and silver, and he even gave a necklace of silver and pearls to Thranduil, who named him Elf Friend before the Lord returned to his halls. Bilbo would adventure with Gandalf for a time, coming back to Beorn's Hall and the House of Elrond, and then recovering some of the treasure from the troll cave that the company had buried not far from the road through the wilderness. Before long, Bilbo returned to the Shire, not being the same hobbit he was when he had left. Even though he was believed to have been dead, and hobbits sold off his things, he bought them back and settled once more in Bag End. 
He would write about his journey there and back again, a hobbit's tale by Bilbo Baggins. Ever after returning from his journey, he was considered to be odd or cracked by others in the Shire. But some who knew him, such as the dwarves like his friend Balin, some elves and Gandalf who came to visit him from time to time, knew truly of his character and spirit. And who, perhaps, would know better of Bilbo's character than his cousin Frodo, who Bilbo took in and adopted after Frodo lost his parents? Bilbo would bring Frodo up as a proper Baggins and Bag End, and he would teach his gardener Gaffer's son, Sam Gamgee, literacy and some tales such as those about High Elves like King Gilgalad. Bilbo had a fascination with lore and stories and linguistics for the rest of his life. The ring would always be on his mind, and he would even lie about how it came to him, having felt guilty about taking it from Gollum. But in 3001 of the Third Age, Bilbo had grown weary of the Shire, even though he showed little physical sign of aging due to the possession of the One Ring. That year, he and Frodo celebrated their shared birthday, and it was Bilbo's 111th, or 111st, birthday, being a special and well-preserved number of magnificence in the Shire. For one last night in the Shire, he enjoyed himself and his fellow hobbits, as well as Gandalf's fireworks. He gave his famous birthday speech and delighted in his wordplay and disappearing act, where he used the One Ring to escape, and Gandalf tried to cover for his dear friend with a flash, for Bilbo had been wise to hide the ring all this time. Bilbo and Gandalf would talk in Bag End, and the wizard convinced his friend, whose mind had been somewhat twisted by the ring, to willingly give up the ring, just as Bilbo had done with many other possessions to Frodo. That he did, being the first ring-bearer of the One Ring, to openly and willingly give up the One Ring of his own volition, before leaving Bag End with his dwarven companions. He and his dwarves would wander, going on to Rivendell for a time before continuing east and going back to Dale and Erebor, and seeing those places again. Ere long, however, he returned and retired in Rivendell, writing his book as well as many other literary pieces or elvish translations. He met Aragorn, who he called the Dúnedain, and together they composed the Song of Eärendil, the forefather of Aragorn and Elrond. And Bilbo even had the courage to speak such poems, even in front of the very elves who knew much about the Mariner. And age caught up with him, since he had not the One Ring. In 3018 of the Third Age, Bilbo and Frodo reunited and spoke once more, even though they were both changed. And Frodo had then carried the ring and been the master of Bag End himself for some time. But the ring had not let go of Bilbo, and for a moment he became like an evil and foul creature to Frodo when he wanted to see the One Ring. Bilbo, as a ring bearer and finder of the One Ring, went to the Council of Elrond, and even in his old age, he felt responsible for the ring, and so he offered to carry it to Mount Doom, believing that it was his burden to bear. But Gandalf said that it was not his duty, and his time to carry it had passed. If Bilbo had started this whole thing, he might be expected to finish it, but the ring had a great long legacy, as Gandalf had discovered. And so Bilbo stayed in Rivendell, giving Frodo his mithril coat and sting, both of which would save Frodo's life more times than once, and the One Ring was eventually brought to its destruction. He was unable to make it to the wedding of his friends Aragorn and Arwen in Minas Tirith, for the powers of the One Ring were gone, as the ring itself was, and Bilbo was ancient even in the measure of hobbits. He was not to make any more journeys save one. Frodo and the other hobbits would go back with Gandalf and Elrond to Rivendell after their journey to visit Bilbo before going back to the Shire. And finally, two years later in 3021 of the Third Age, on his 131st birthday, when Bilbo had accomplished his goal of living longer than his grandfather the old Took, and longer than any other hobbit for that matter, he met Frodo and Sam along the road to the Grey Havens in the Shire where went all of the remaining ring-bearers in Middle-earth. And so Bilbo sang one last poem called Bilbo's Last Song at the Grey Havens, and he bid farewell to this Middle-earth on September 29th of 3021 of the Third Age. And so with Frodo and the bearers of the three elven rings, Bilbo bid farewell to Sam, Merry, and Pippin, and to Middle-earth itself, and went into the west, to Valinor of the Undying Lands, where Bilbo would live out the rest of his days in peace. His time as a ring-bearer allotted him this special privilege. And so we come to the end of our tale about Bilbo Baggins. From the story of Bilbo, we see how modesty, courage, love, and a willing heart are some of the greatest virtues in this world. 
Indeed, if more of us valued food, cheer, a warm heart and home with friends and family, as Bilbo did, the world would be a merrier place. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this character history. I really did making it. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections about Bilbo Baggins? Let me know in the comments below. I can see how Bilbo was one of the characters Tolkien truly identified with, for his good nature, his love of lore and writing, and for how many characters Bilbo met, as he was friends with many, among other things about him. While I might say this about many characters, Bilbo is one of my favorites in the Legendarium, and rightfully so. Namarie Ian Holm and Orson Bean, and thank you both so much for everything. May the stars always light your paths. My friends, please check out our Hobbit Day 2020 playlist in the description below, and bid all of the participating channels a fond greeting from our Men of the West community. To further support the channel, please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for podcasts and Discord server. Links for all of those are in the description below. I want to shout out our Valar tier patrons, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Cal Wetzel, Lane Grimes, Samuel McBee, Jonathan Putnam, and Mark Kralik. Thank you guys all so much. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today. And I'll see you all again on Sunday with a new timeline of art of video as we get into the Second Age. Everyone, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Happy Hobbit Day. Until our next adventure, my great friends.